So a couple of years ago, like a lot of years ago, um, I would say like 15 years ago or more, um, Julian, my, my husband, he used to go to another cell, cell group or small group, and you know, his dad passed away and it was really hard for, for them as a family. And then my dad, who was the domain pastor, he's like, no, I want you to start work, working with um, my daughter, Johanna. And I was in my sister's cell. So, you know, out of the blue, we, he had been in church his whole life, but we were in friends, you know, it was just like, uh, you know, something funny is, you know, I always tell this story that I had a, a quinces. Is there anyone here who had a quinces? And I didn't want to do like a big party or anything. I was like, no, nah, mom, it's okay. And my mom was like, no, that's for your whole life. You have to do a quinces. And I was like, okay. So Julian attended my quinces <laughs> and we didn't even know each other. So, I mean, just from like far away. Um, but anyways, so he started coming to that cell group and um, right away, you know, Colombians, they start teasing you right away. So from that first moment, my sister was like, wow, you guys make a great couple. And we didn't even know each other. And they teased us like, how many years? <laughs> like forever. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So, and then a few days after, we went to um, like have like a dinner as a group. And we were just like sharing, and again, they were like, wow, you guys. And we were like, awkward. <laughs> but, and then um, we were like drinking like grape juice. And he, he started laughing, and then he's like, ha ha. And guess what? Like, grape juice comes over my white pants. That was our first. <laughs> great experience. <laughs> it's like, I'm so sorry. So that's how we started. And, but then, you know, our relationship kept growing, I would say, like, but just as friends. And everyone was like, oh, you got, and I would always say like, no, no, he's like my brother, right? He's like my brother, no, I don't. So when someone says he's like your brother, <laughs> Because we're not brother, brother and sister, <laughs> and eventually it happened. But every little girl wants to get married, and every guy wants to get married. You know, there's a study that says that 93% of millennials want to get married. So if they say that they don't, they're lying. <laughs> because there's a study that says 93% of millennials want to get married. And the Bible says this. In Genesis 2.18, it says, It's not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper who is just right for him. All right, let's read it together. It's not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper who is just right for him. So God does not want you to be alone. That's something that I want to make clear for you. He wants you to find the right person. He's, he wants you to, at the right time, find that special person. And Genesis 2.24 says, that is why a man leaves his father and mother and is united to his wife, and they become one flesh. Say with me, one flesh. So when you find that special someone, what is going to happen? You're going to leave your house. You're going to leave, um, you know, being dependent on your mother and your father. And you're going to become one with your husband and your wife. And that is a special thing because a lot of people want to skip this and they want to go straight into the one flesh. They want to go straight into like being like sexually together. And that's what the world and the movies and everything is telling us that is normal. You know, just go for it even from the first date. But it's a beautiful thing when you're able to wait in the Lord. And it's, a, it's hard to do. And I remember when we first started dating that we actually had some 
like principles that we did for ourselves as well from the very beginning and we were like, you know, we're gonna wait until we're married. And it's a beautiful thing that you can say that. Um, my, even my sister Sarah, she went and, and with her boyfriend, they were like, we're not even gonna kiss until our wedding day. That was their decision. But I thought, I thought it was something like so beautiful and so great because it was their decision. But it's so cool when someone says like, I'm not gonna be guided by the things of this world, but I'm gonna be guided by what the word of God says. And I'm gonna decide to wait until we are together for life. Because as we said last time, once we start dating, we don't date just to see. We don't date just to like try out something. We date because we have a goal and our goal is to be married for life. It's not like today I'm gonna date you and then tomorrow I'm gonna date someone else and then in one month if it doesn't work, I'm gonna get made, I'm gonna start dating somebody else. No, it's like this is for life. And the most beautiful thing that you can do is have a relationship based on the word of God. Say with me, word of God. It's the greatest thing you can do. So that's why you gotta start growing in yourself first, as we we're talking about today. Because a lot of people say like, oh, I like this guy from school, or I like this guy from my job, and I know I can bring him to church, and I know I can make him you know, be a born again Christian. How many of you have heard that? And it's very rare. Like I've never seen anyone do that. Like one of my cousins, um, she was doing really, really good in church. Um, she left for a few months and then I see her getting married. Like just a few months later, getting married to a guy like way older than her. He's not a Christian. And she used to be one of my best friends and I was like, oh man, you know, just in a few months that she left church and she, you know, just did whatever she wanted, not being guided by the word of God, she married this guy. They were married for six years and it was like the worst time for her. And the guy ended up being like really, really bad, like a liar <clears throat> in many, many ways until she finally decided to get a divorce. We know we're about the same age. And she, she, she got a divorce like a few years ago, but she's still single right now. And she's, she's in church again, she's really beautiful. Um, you know, she is like, I know she has a great, God has a great future for her. But that thing of like leaving church, making a bad decision, and just marrying to the first guy who comes to you and like tells you beautiful words, and look, you know, look, look what it can happen for the rest of your life. Look what it can do for the rest of your life. Because her relationship was not based on the word of God. But when your relationship is based on the word of God, it's so beautiful. And it's like there's peace in the relationship. It's not, it's not like it's like you got to make an effort for everything. And maybe you see things that are, you know, happening in that guy's life or in your girlfriend. You're like, no, but... You know, we're gonna work on that. No, but he's lying a little bit. No, but it's just like, it's like a white lie. I know he's gonna change. No, but, and you start seeing certain things and you don't speak up. And you say, I know that when we're married, it's gonna get better, you know, but when, it's, when you are courting or when you're friends and you see things from before and you don't speak up, then when you get married, it's gonna get worse. So start working on yourself first, start working on your relationship with God. And as you grow in your relationship with God, once God brings you the right person, then it's gonna be a relationship where both of you guys are based on the word of God and it's gonna be something amazing. And the word says that two are better than one. Say that, two are better than one. So. I love when people in church start dating. I love when people in church start meeting each other because that's what we want for you guys. We don't want you guys to be single forever or like, you know, 
until you're like 40, 50, because a lot of people have like really, really high expectations and they're waiting for something like, wow. But we want you guys to start dating. You know, obviously, if you've been like in church for a while and then you're like, I'm spiritually mature, uh, I'm the kind of person who f wants to help people out. I don't want you to be like, oh, like my leader's not helping me out or they're making it impossible. If we obviously see that maybe something's not right or maybe you gotta work a little bit in, in like an area in your life, we're gonna let you know and we're gonna give you an advice. But it's, it's a very personal decision that you gotta take on your own, right? But something that I saw like my sister, my sister Johanna that she's done, is that she's actually helped some people out, right? Like for example, I know like Bobby, is Bobby here or no? I don't think he's, a, you know, some of you guys know Bob, Bobby and, and Bibi. So Bobby was praying for Bibi. And Bibi was like really like shy, she didn't really speak English. But Bobby told, my sister, oh, I'm praying for her, right? And, and Joyce was like, okay, so I'm gonna help you. Like, and she told, she told Bibi, and at first she's like, no, no, nada que ver, <laughs> like, no way. But then, a, like a few months later, she's like, okay, I'm gonna go. And, you know, she actually helped him up to go on a date, and they had their first date, I don't know what they spoke about and if they were able to understand each other. I don't know if up till today they're able to understand each other. I'm just kidding. I hope they understand each other. But um, I'm just kidding. They just had a baby and everything. Um, but I saw like how she helped them out. And also like Lore here and Johnny, right? Johnny was praying for, for Lore for a long time <laughs> she was like no no at first as well but then my sister had a dream and and she's like i think he's the one for you and that's how she was like open to the idea of getting to know him because a lot of times you you have really high like you have something in your mind like a picture and i actually at first i was like oh i think i'm gonna marry someone from another country uh, because my sister married a Brazilian, and I was like, oh, maybe it's from somewhere else, overseas. You know, you're all, everyone is always thinking they're gonna come from somewhere else, right? And they're sitting right next to you. So <laughs> look at the person next to you. <laughs> Might be her or him. Um, so me, for example, it was kind of like the same thing. I was like, God, I know you're going to bring that person somewhere, maybe to a conference or something. And then we started being friends with Julian. And I actually really enjoyed hanging out with him. I was like, he's so funny. We're always like laughing. And, but I was like, no, God, I know he's just my friend, right? <laughs> just my friend. That's it, nothing more. But then we started like practicing more in the band and we went to Nashville and we did some stuff there recording and uh, we went as a band. And as Julian shared last time, he started being a little bit more special, right? Like he, would, he knew I liked M&Ms, the yellow M&Ms. So he would like, when we were practicing, he'd like leave them there. We just, and I was like, oh, who, who brought me these? He's like, oh. Some, something little, no worries. <laughs> so, but he's like, those little details, and I was like, oh, he's cool, right? You're like, oh, he's cool, he's funny, he's special. And then we started spending more time together. And I saw, like, the thing that I saw the most is that he loved God first. Like, I was like, wow, he's so in love with God, and he loved the ministry as well, because that's something that can only happen on your own with God. And I saw that in, in Julian, I was like, wow, he's a man of God, we share the same vision, we both wanna be pastors, we, w we both wanna serve the Lord together. I mean, not at the time, but 
uh, I saw that that was his passion, and I was like, that's so cool. And then when, you know, when we were, our friendship was getting stronger, he spoke to my sister, actually. And she's like, yeah, I'm praying, but I don't know if it's mutual, um, you know. So then my sister calls me, that was like a few months after, and I was like, yeah, I think I do like him. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, she, she helped me out as well. She's like helped us out setting the, the date. So if you want to have someone helping you out, please get to know my sister. <laughs> she can help you out, set a date, set up a date. Um, she's like the Cupid for our church. So get to know her. <laughs> she's great. Um, no, but seriously, so, and then we went on our first date together because we were always together but as a group, right? Always with like more people, but then, and then we did the process of special friendship, courting, until we got married. Wow. That was like 10 years ago. Ten years ago, we, we got married in Bogota, Colombia, January 30th, like at 6 p.m., 5 p.m. Um, but yeah, it was like a great process. And once we, you get into your wedding and you've done like the, the process and you've waited, and it's amazing because then you're going to have like the best honeymoon and you're going to have... Um, the best years, we said we're, we're going to wait. We actually planned we're going to wait a couple years before we have kids because we were, like, traveling and stuff. And then we, we said three years. After three years, we're like, oh, let's wait one more year. <laughs> and, then, and then we almost waited almost five years to have kids. And then we had them back to back, three kids. Um, but it's, it's great, and now I'm so grateful that I was able to wait. Julian was the first boyfriend I ever had. And so, because I, I knew that I wasn't just going to date anyone, and when I would date someone, I, w I had a vision of getting married. And he knew that thing as well. He knew, like, when I date someone, it's going to be with that vision. Obviously, if... You know, you start dating and you don't see, you don't have the chemistry or you see like, ah, oh, it's not working out. It's cool to break up, you know, don't feel bad because that's why you're dating. That's why you have a special friendship to know if he's the right person. A lot of people feel bad like, oh, we started this special friendship, but it didn't work out. You know, that's what that's for because you're getting to know each other in a deeper way. And something else that Genesis 2.18 says, it says, it's not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper who is just right for him. Say with me, just right. Just right for him. One more time, say just right. When I read this verse, I was like, wow, there's only one person in the world who is just right for you. Isn't this amazing? And as I said, like a lot of people, they think that there could be a lot of people, but it's supernatural when you get to know the right person. It's like someone who is just right for you. And I, wanted, I wanna ask you guys something. Are your expectations too high if you're single? Are your expectations too high? Why, why am I saying this? Because seriously, I, I am worried about like some 30, 35, 40-year-old girls and guys, even 50s, who are single, and I saw how their expectations were super high, always. So they're like, God, I want someone who looks like Thor. <laughs> maybe, maybe he could be a little bit shorter, because I'm short. But that's like my type, you know, maybe like a little bit more built, a little bit, you know, six pack. And then he's like, I want him to have the healing anointing that Pastor Caesar has. 
And then you want I want to I want him to preach, you know, like Pastor Julian. I want him to, you know, so you have like all these high expectations. I want him to have a doctorate in this. And I want him to earn over a million dollars a year because, you know, I want to live good. No, I'm just exaggerating. But a lot of people have like really high expectations. And then you look at yourself, or maybe you just have a GED. <laughs> maybe. It's true. I'm telling you because I've seen it. Maybe you, don't, you haven't worked out in ages and you're like eating just junk food. You don't really like are ready, getting ready to like preach. You don't even, you don't even have disciples and you want to marry a pastor. So like if you want to marry a prince, you got to be a princess. This is not like you're praying like the princess and the frog. But you, you gotta, it's got to be both ways because I've seen it. And as I said a lot of times, God has someone who is right here in church, right? So look, look around. Ching, ching, ching. <laughs> it might be sitting next to you because, you know, there's a short period of time that we gotta take advantage of. There's a short period of time that if we let it pass, then I've seen that when, as people get older, it gets harder to, to find the person, right? And a lot of guys, as they're older, they like them younger. <laughs> I've seen it. It's true. But that's why you gotta have in the, within that period that God gives you, we're going to say, God, I don't want to have like really high expectations. You obviously want a man of God. At least tell God he's a born again Christian. <laughs> At least. You obviously want a man of God, a woman of God, and someone who, who shares your same vision. There's no one who's perfect. There's not like everyone's going to have like something. I'm telling you because I'm not perfect. Julian's not perfect. But as we get to know each other, we work on those things and we have that growth mindset that we know we can get better at things. So get to know people in church, basically. Tell the person next to you, get to know people in church. Because if you don't get to know people in church and, you, and you're hanging out just with people in the world who don't like share your same principles, most likely you're going to start dating some of those people and usually it doesn't end up well. Genesis 2, 16 and 17 says, but the Lord God warned him, you may freely eat the fruit of every tree in the garden except the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. If you eat its fruit, you are sure to die. Say with me, except. So God, imagine this. He put Adam and Eve in the garden. He prepared him because if you read the, the verses that are before this, he's like, he prepared him to work the land, name the animals. You know, he had a lot of stuff to do. But he gave him one rule. Say with me, one rule. So it's like, you may eat of any tree except the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, because when you eat it, you are sure to die. Say, you are sure to die. So God gave him some parameters. Say parameters. Why did he give him these parameters? Because he didn't want him to die. And this was a spiritual death. I don't know if the keyboard can come. This was a spiritual death. He wasn't talking about uh, a physical death, right? Because that's what God gives us these parameters, and we get to know these parameters in the Word of God. When you obey them, you're okay. But when you break these parameters, it's like that's when sin comes into your life, and sin brings death. That's what sin brings into your life. It brings death. So God doesn't want you 
you to die. And this is exactly what happened to Adam and Eve. When they, when Eve was deceived by the serpent and she ate of the forbidden fruit and then she gave that fruit to, to Adam, what happened? Their eyes were opened because they sinned and they realized they were naked. Because before, is like the, the Bible says that they were naked and they were not ashamed of it. You know, it's like little kids. You know, if you see a two-year-old, one-year-old, three-year-old, they don't mind being naked like around the house, even here. Like they don't, they don't have that mentality because they're innocent and they don't have that. And that's how Adam and Eve were. And then when God saw them and they were covered with like plants, and it's like, why are you covered? Oh, because we are naked and we were ashamed. It's like, who told you you were naked? Have you eaten from this fruit? Have you not followed the parameters I gave you? And they were, and then Adam was like, oh, it was Eve. And Eve was like, no, it was the serpent. So they didn't follow the rules. And something that I've realized is that you got to make your own rules. And not necessarily I, I give you your own rules, but you gotta make your own rules that you're gonna say, I'm, as a single person, I'm gonna have these rules that I'm gonna follow. Even when we were dating with Julian, we had rules. We were like, we're never gonna go to a house that no one is in there by ourselves because we're still human beings, you know, and we don't wanna allow temptation into our lives. So uh, that was one of the rules we had. And even now that we're married, we have some parameters that we have decided to follow because how many of you know that even if when you're married you gotta even guard your marriage even more right it's not like now i'm married i could do whatever i want no it's like now that you're married you still have some parameters that you gotta follow and so like i'm not just gonna advise a man on my own you know there's always gonna be a man there with me same thing with julian with a girl or go alone in the car with a guy or you know, it's things that nobody told me, like, it's not in the Bible. It's not like, right there, you got to do these things. Like, I've decided that I'm going to follow my own parameters. So I'm going to give you guys some homework for this week. And you're going to write down at least four parameters that you're going to write down for your life. You know, it could be like, I'm always going to go out as a group. I'm never going to, you know... I'm never gonna be just alone with a guy in a certain play or with a girl. I'm gonna have an open life, you know, like I'm gonna have no secrets. I'm not gonna text after a certain, after like Julian told us last week, after 10 p.m. Parameters on who do you follow on Instagram, you know? Would Jesus follow those people? Like those simple parameters that is not like I'm gonna be checking you or your leader is going to be checking your phone, or no, it's just like, it's you and God, because you cannot hide from God. Nobody knows the conversations you're having. Nobody knows who you're following or what you're seeing online. You can be here lifting your hands. I'm no longer a slave of fear to fear, but then you are looking at pornography, but then you are, you know, so I don't know what you've been allowing and if you've been breaking some of these parameters, but you got to make them on your own. And the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 10, 23, it says, I am allowed to do anything, but not everything is good for you. You say, I'm, I am allowed to do anything, but not everything is beneficial. So it's basically God is telling you, you're allowed to do whatever you want. Like, I, I, I'm not going to be there, like, judging you. But not everything is good for you, and not everything is beneficial. So you're allowed to do whatever you want. And basically, God is telling you, and he's letting you know that if you allow these things that are not according to the word of God, they're not beneficial. And maybe you don't see those consequences right now, but you will see them in the future. All right? So you're going to say to yourself, God, I know that you don't want me to be alone, but I know that in order to find that person, I need to have some parameters for my life. I need to have some rules for me when I'm single, when I'm dating, when I'm married. I don't know what stage of your life you're right now, 
but you got to have so those parameters. So I want to ask you today, what fruit have you been eating? What fruit have you been eating? Just how God told Adam and Eve. You can eat from all of these fruits except from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Just one rule. So what fruit have you been eating? Have you, are you eating salads? Are you eating protein? Or are you eating junk food? It applies for both, for physical and for spiritual, because you can have the same thing. Spiritual, you can just have eat junk food your whole day, be on social media the whole day, be on like Netflix and doing like stuff that is not really feeding your spirit or feeding your mind right. So what fruit have you been eating? And you can write down your own principles, all right? I want you guys to stand and just place your hand over your heart and say, God, thank you for choosing me. Thank you because there is a promise in the Bible in Genesis 2.18 that says, it is not good for man to be alone. And say, God, I, I declare that promise over my life. You don't want me to be alone. You want me to find that someone. You want me to get married right. And you, I know you have the perfect time for me to meet that person. But I want to be ready. Say, God, I want to be married. I want to be ready for when that person comes. And I want to have some principles. And I want to be guided by the word of God. I don't just don't want to do my own will, whatever I think. But I want to be guided by your word. Because I know that a right relationship is a relationship that is based on the word of God. And that is the type of the relationship that I dream. And just in your own words, you're going to talk to God and you're going to say, God, this is the type of relationship that I'm praying for. And just prophesy over your life. Say, God, I know that you have a wife who's a woman of God, a husband who's a man of God. And together, we're going to fulfill your dream because it's not my dream, it's your dream. And it's what you've decided for us to do. And thank you because you want what's best for me. Thank you because you don't want me to be alone. Thank you because you want me to be happy with that special someone. And I know that at the right time, you're going to bring him or her to me. And I am ready for when that person comes. And at the same time, I ask you, God, to help me establish some parameters in my life. If you're single, you know, you thought about these parameters, just say them and say, God, I want to live a holy life. I want to wait until I'm married to become one flesh with that person, Lord. If you're dating, you know, also have some parameters for you and your girlfriend. And if you're married, say, God, I also want to have some parameters so that I can have a holy marriage. Thank you for what you're doing in us. Thank you for everyone that is here. And I declare that many marriages are going to start happening as well in our church and many people are getting to know each other in your name i pray amen